ready we're ready what's up you sim racers out there today i am looking at a set of course uh, uh more importantly i am looking at it with a kind of a talk and drive here for y'all guys uh with my aggie force pro v2 i am going to do some videos of, of setups and stuff and i'll just share them actually on the owner's club i have a forza one out there which i forgot to name it tjr sim uh for the forza <laughs> one but it's literally the only forza one out there so it's mine so anyway uh but that's on the owners club if you want to try that one out but i will be sharing some more on there just look for tjr sim in the description there and you'll know it's mine uh to try out for your liking of course i suggest you try out others as well because everybody's different everybody likes a different feel what i have going on may not relate to you as well uh, I may have forces up to too high, you know, for instance when I go out there and I pick other people's Generally theirs is way too soft for me. Uh, they're just I, I mean, I I feel like these people are driving with little twig arms and they They just can't handle any forces. They have it so far down You might as well be driving a g29 with extreme accuracy uh, with hardly no force feedback effect So I don't get it uh, But it is what it is. That's what people like uh, so yeah, good, good for them. But I will kind of go through a little bit here and let me pull up my settings that I'm running here. Now this particular setting setup I did get from uh, someone on there. Uh, I forgot their name. Uh, it's not really important right now because don't, people don't put their name. Well, it does have their name next to the um, who owned it or who submitted it. But anyway, I digress. Uh, they had their smoothing here around 30 something percent, 31, 32 percent, 33 percent. Now this smoothing up here, the AccuForce smoothing, this is really pertaining to your, when you have your uh, steering feedback foundation on. That's when that one comes into play. Your game force feedback smoothing really does have nothing to do with your steering feedback foundation is, is what I found out. So uh, keep that in mind. So if you have game force feedback off and you're just using steering foundation you're going to want to use the top one here so just to run through that but let's get out on track i'm going to move it over here out of the way uh you might be able to see a little bit on the screen of it now i'll move it down here but that's the nice thing about this is you can leave this sim commander software up on screen while you are racing and having fun and i'm just in a little practice session here and i'll talk and drive what I'm feeling going through that curve there I feel the subtle I feel the rough nudges right there uh, but I felt the little subtlety of the first curve with the tires trying to chirp going up this hill tires are chirping of course the, uh, the wheel is trying to self-center itself right here I am a little too hot but able to correct it and felt that felt that tire when it went over to the right and then I'm pulling it back to the left you feel that almost like that tire is trying to tuck from the rim uh hopefully that makes sense but yeah you, you just feel it it feels like a real car so yeah loving it um now you don't see right there you feel that the uh front end try to go to the right the back end i feel in the motion of course uh pushing me the opposite direction highly recommend motion to anybody uh, it's actually a bigger bang for a buck than a direct drive wheel, in my opinion. But uh, if you have them both coupled together, oh, man, it's nice. Uh, right through this turn here, you feel a lot of, just like you see on screen, the way my hands are moving through the wheel, you feel that roughness, right? Now, through here going down the straights, you don't see my wheel you know, moving on screen. And you wouldn't even see it if I had the camera on it. You wouldn't you'd see it. But it is moving so finitely and fast, you feel this vibration through the wheel. And that's actually pretty uh, cool considering that this has no, you know, uh, or going through there too, you feel great. It has no motors in the wheel to replicate tactile feedback of the road, right? It's the motor literally, the step stepper motor just moving so fast. Uh, to give you those little vibrations and stuff. So neat. Going down the straight here, you've got a lot of road feel, a uh, little crackles in the track and stuff. Just feel really nice. Uh, one thing I would say going, ooh, look at that, front end sliding. It's funny, I can tell you all this stuff, and it's just not, you're not going to see it on screen as well as I feel it. Uh, but yeah, 
Oh, going up there, chatter through the front wheel. But again, what I was going to say is that the software, Sim Command, yeah, I just cannot hit that curve. Sim Commander software really brings out the details uh, in, in your driving, in the uh, reaction of your wheel. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's a must use, I think. It, it just really makes this wheel uh, sparkle. So now I did want to touch on, see these bumps and stuff when you hit these curbs and stuff, they're very, very rough. And if you're used to, say, uh, belt driven wheel like that, they're just extremely rough. And I know a lot of people will go into the like the I and I files and uh, on some games and try to turn down the curb effects there. Uh, of course, instead of course, you can turn the curb effects up and down anyways. I actually have them. Uh, I don't think I have them on actually right now, I have them off. But uh, if you're running like me, game force feedback and steering foundation, whatever in-game settings that you have running, say like in a set of course right now, uh, are going to come through the wheel. And the steering foundation uh, kind of helps settle the things down, make them not quite as harsh, and gives it more of a uh, fluid feeling to the wheel response, in my opinion, than just using game force feedback. In some games like Assetto Corsa, uh, Race Room, uh, it's kind of similar as well as far as the roughness goes. But especially Assetto Corsa, I like using foundation. Uh, I like using a mix of the two. I would suggest people just use one or the other. Right through there, he feels really good. Uh, a lot of bumps. But I am going to do this here. Let's slow down here and stop. I'm going to pull up this. And what I did find a while ago is I cranked this up to like around 110 116 it's pretty close you don't have to be precise okay just get it in the ballpark and now when I go over the curbs oh I clicked off of it for some reason go back now when I go over the curbs everything's a lot smoother let me go over it now yeah way smoother even though it's rough but the sound you get is like the sound you get in a real car. You you hear that that rubber being pushed up and down, but um, even better, you feel it. Uh, it feels like rubber now. Now it feels like rubber when I go over, and that's just turning the smooth smoothness up. You know, in the old way, when you turn the smoothness up in say a belt driven wheel, uh, you didn't like to turn it up too much because it took out a lot of the details, uh, the little details. Uh, same with force too. Takes out a lot of the little details. Well, not with direct drive. That goes away. Uh, all you're doing with your your game force feedback and with direct drive wheels is just basically setting your wheel weight. How heavy do you want your wheel resisting you? That has really nothing to do with the actual finite uh, feelings that you're going to get on track and with your particular car uh, at all. And smoothing doesn't seem to neg negatively. Seats vibrating my voice here negatively affect your uh, uh, your force feedback. So, you know, don't be afraid of using smoothing. It uh, works really well. And like I said, use game force feedback smoothing if you were going to be using game force feedback only. And then obviously if you're like me, I have a combination of both uh, steering foundation on with smoothing on steering foundation. Now you'll notice I'm wearing gloves now. Uh, these are actually my paintball gloves, uh, so working really good because they're fingerless, but, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, but this wheel spins so dang fast that when you're, when you're out on track and you have a slide, or even if you're doing rally racing especially because your wheel spins around so fast, uh, with this Alcantara uh, wheel, I tend to get uh, hand burns on it, you know, so... Uh, it gets really rough on your hands without them. So now I can see the use of wearing gloves uh, with a wheel. Not just really to protect your Alcantara from getting worn out so quickly, because I actually enjoy the feel of the Alcantara in my hands uh, as opposed to leather. And it's just a very supple feeling. But anyway, uh, yeah back to the strength of the wheel is, is so strong you're going to find that you're going to end up needing uh, some gloves 
to not tear up your hands. Man, that bump through there felt really good. Very rubber filling in in there. So, and that was just with smoothing. That's all you had to do is just increase up the smoothing. I increased up the smoothing quite a bit. I could probably toy around with decreasing the smoothing a little bit. Uh, at first, I went to like 145 just to see if I can get an effect. And I, I generally do that. Uh, I'll pump it up higher than I think I would ever need and then see if it's gonna give me the effect I want. Man, that feels good through there, just that vibration. Uh, and then I'll back it back down so I don't induce too much smoothing. Uh, Cause you could put in so much smoothing that I, w I haven't experienced it uh, cause it's not really needed, but, I, but you will lose some little details if you put up smoothing too much. Uh, but by the time you got to that point, uh, it's, you went too far anyway. You already solved your issue of taking out the spikes uh, in the track or in the force feedback with the smoothing the way it is uh, where you set it. So, so think of smoothing. Wow, that's so cool. So I went ahead and hit the brake a little harder there too. And uh, it made that wheel just turn in more. Man, it just feels so uh, lifelike, uh, like a real car. That's the neat thing about the AccuForce is you can, uh, everything feels real. It uh, feels like you're driving a real car now as, as opposed to a toy. Uh, you just feel very connected to the road. So, yeah, I like it. And this is after, you know, a month of use, four weeks. I think I'm on my fifth week of use. And, you know, uh, honeymoon period is over now. Uh, she's just the old lady now, man. So... But uh, she uh, she does good. She uh, treats me right, so I like it. She's, it's a good wheel, a really good wheel. You know, I talked about the uh, forces and stuff, and I, I think that's on a lot of people's minds. You know, it's 13 newton meters of force enough. It really goes from 13 to 15.6 newton meters. Let's round up to 16. So it's 13 to 16 newton meters of power. Is it enough? You know, in the beginning I said it's it's not enough in my review, and I still stand by that. I don't think it's enough, but with the caveat that if you were not using Sim Commander 4 software, you would basically want a sledgehammer to kill a fly instead of using a fly swatter, right? And what I mean by that is that, by that analogy is that if you didn't have such a powerful software like this, you're gonna want a lot of extra power in your wheel so it ups the uh, feelings of the little small little crevices in the road and stuff. And then it's gonna make the big crevices like the, you know, the, the rumble strips, the sausages here on the side, be so overbearing that you're, you're gonna stay the heck away from them. Uh, which is fine, that's the point. You wanna stay away from them anyways. You do use them uh, as part of the track, you know, but uh, you can make them feel nice and rubbered in if you want to. But anyway, so if you have if you have more power, the power, uh, you can bring in the little nuances uh, back to your wheel that you wouldn't with lesser power. Plus, it does have a little bit more of a dampening effect with the larger motor, from my understanding. Uh, but yeah, that would be why. However, with Sim Commander Four. As tedious as some people complain, as a lot of people complain it to be, uh, it's actually extremely powerful. There is a learning curve to it, but you know I've been using Sim Commander for uh, many, many years and had some guides up already on the channel for uh, setting up your Sim vibe and stuff. So go check them out as well. There's actually a whole playlist for uh, I think it's Ac labeled AccuForce. So. But uh, go check them all out. Everything that I put that relates to AccuForce is in there. Now, you see me go crazy right there? There is some little glitch on this track that when, as soon as I go across the start finish line, there's a bump in there that just takes me off crazy. And depending on where I enter that front straight right there. Man, look at that. Woo, man. Feels good. Uh, so, yeah, that's, you know, I don't have a lot more to say about it besides that the accuracy, as you're seeing on the track, I'm able to catch a lot of things, right? I'm able to let the back end of the car slide through the corner. The car steers itself pretty much. I'm just kind of uh, holding on, really. Uh, so.
So yeah, it, it's really, really good. The level of detail you get. I love the front chatter you feel through here. And I'm not talking about with just the slip effect turned up when you're under braking, say in a set of Corsa. Uh, I'm talking about when you're already on the gas or off the gas coasting and you're hitting those bumps. That just that road feel that you get through here is really good. Of course, you can turn the road feel up and down to your liking uh, through the Sim Commander software, or you can turn off the Sim Commander uh, software and just use the wheel itself, not even messing with it, and just start adjusting things through the actual. Uh, game force feedback selector sliders themselves which I've tried out as well and it works pretty good uh, tried it out on a set of course the competition and uh, it was actually had some really good results with that one I didn't have the same good results with a set of Corsa it was just too harsh um, on there but I'd probably if I'd have spent a little bit more time I'd have messed with the smoothing because uh, at the time I was a little bit new to the software and didn't understand what every individual slider did as much as I do now so but I think if I went back and tried to set a Corsa without Sim Commander 4 I could replicate a pretty good result without Sim Commander 4 however guarantee you I will not replicate the same result I get with using Sim Commander 4 so anyway that is a look when I slide you know I can't even make that curve <laughs> but it's fun as hell sliding through there Anyway, uh, I'll eventually share these set of courses settings up on the owner's program there. I suggest you play around with it. Uh, use found steering foundation by itself. Uh, and then use gain force feedback by itself. Remember, adjust the slider under the gain force feedback to so whatever you want your wheel weight. You don't really have that luxury as much under the steering foundation when, uh, when you're just utilizing that. Your wheel weight is the intensity that you put. Your intensity slider is how strong, how much force you're getting back. But your wheel weight, and I'll pull it up here with a steering foundation. Where are we at here? Uh, I got it on 25 right now. If I had gain force feedback off, I would have this up around 130-ish uh, range. So the higher the number you have on it, uh, the heavier wheel is going to be, but you can go too high to where you start losing the details. So if you're going to use steering feedback foundation, I would suggest you uh, do a couple of laps and, and, and do the auto tune for it. So it'll set your steering for, uh, feedback, jeez, your steering <laughs> feedback foundation for you because what it does is it sets it up to kind of be optimal and uh, uh, give you no clipping. Uh, and enough wheel weights to replicate what you would feel with that particular car on that particular track. And you can pretty much just duplicate that for other ones and just slightly adjust the steering feedback foundation yourself as you go with other ones. So anyway, um, that's it on that. Just some tips uh, that I'm discovering here. I run both and uh, I'm really liking it on this on a set of course. Uh, most of the games I run I run either or, uh, I either run game force feedback or I'll run uh, the steering uh, feedback foundation by itself. Uh, I don't like a mix as much on other ones. Game force feedback is usually my go-to. However, I do tinker around with both, obviously, and um, steering uh, feedback foundation, uh, SFF, we'll call it that, uh, definitely smooths out the rough edges and stuff. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's it. Check you later. I'm out.